Sarah Bodwe here from Horse Racing Nation. Pleased to be joined by Barry, the Sniper Spears, to talk some Breeders' Cup. And I gave you a pretty tough race to get things started oh. here at the very beginning of Breeders' Cup events, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. We have a full field of 12. We got some Euros. We got some Phillies. We've got a little bit of everything. And Barry... Before we get started, where can everybody find you to get all of your Breeders' Cup takes, excellent handicapping opinions, and some funny memes as well? <laughs> um, I would say that would probably be my Twitter account. Uh, so it's at Urban Handicapper, and it's U-R-B-N Handicapper with no A in Urban. Um, but yeah, that, I'm usually there all day, every day, talking whatever's coming up. So, you know. Right now, it's it's all Breeders' Cup all the time, though. <laughs> of course. I mean, the the entire focus is on these this upcoming weekend and these 14 races that we have going on. Of course, all the content focus is on all of these races as well. Um, the morning lines are out, and we do have a very slight favorite all the way to the outside in the Platinum Queen coming over from Europe. How do you feel about the post draw for these horses? Is it changing your opinion on anybody at all in this field of 12? Yeah, definitely the Platinum Queen, who you just uh, alluded to. Definitely her her post position will most assuredly hurt her chances because, you know, inside of her is a lot of speed. I don't believe that she is as speedy as she is in Europe in the U.S. So. It's really going to compromise her chances. I'm not really sure how how well she can come, you know, kind of come off pace, and and that's what I'm really doubting. It's just not an ideal post position. She she's really up against it. Not only you know um, being a filly against the boys, but this post position really doesn't help her chances at all. I agree with you there. There's a lot of speed signed on for this race, particularly um, to the inside as well. When you're looking at all of these horses coming over from Europe, the past performances, they look a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. What's your method for sort of handicapping these horses? Um, typically, I, I really do a lot of replay work on all the Euro horses um, because they, you know, the way that we get past performances from Europe over here there really isn't much to go on as far as comments, things like that. So it, it's better seeing than than reading. <laughs> I agree. I watched, I want to say, almost everyone's entire career for this race. Um, yeah, good thing over. is there many. Um, <laughs> you know, not, not, yes. many, not too many starts <laughs> per horse. But, yeah, I, I mean, there's enough of them out there. And, and, and a lot of these European horses have been running against each other at one point. So, you know, I, I like to key in on those replays specifically where they, they have some common opponents here that they're running against um, on Friday. But, man, this is a tough race. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we haven't even gotten yet to a mention for the undefeated 5 for 5 Tyler's Tribe, who's uh, Iowa bred coming in from Prairie Meadows, trying the turf for the first time. What's up with this? Yeah, there's two horses. I mean, Tyler's Tribe and Speedboat Beach. It's like, what do you do with these horses? I mean, they're complete speedballs, and I don't like either of them on the turf. Even though Speedboat Beach has won, I still don't think that that's his preferred or best surface. Um, you know, and and, and I kind of think they might be trying to get out of the way of Cave Rock and go to this spot. That being said, the horse has talent, can win on the turf, but I, I just don't want any part of that horse at a short price. Bob Baffert isn't you know, known for being a turf trainer. Not that he can't do it um, because he's had some turf horses in the past, but it's just not his thing. It's kind of a strange situation. And I think I came up with the only conclusion that you offered as well of just trying to duck cave rock uh, for the same connections because to debut at Del Mar and set a new track record with a 104 <laughs> buyer. Uh, you don't really see them switch surfaces to the turf. His figures regressed um, significantly from that triple digit on debut. Uh, I mean, I certainly can win, but why are we here? Yeah, I, I, it's such a mystery to me. I mean, this horse is fast. I guess they, they wanted to compete, 
but just didn't want to compete against Cave Rock, which I understand. Right. Uh, if you're going to duck, it, it makes sense. Um, going to, I guess, in a way, the local hopeful, it's a Wesley Ward trainee. Love Reigns. She has raced over in Ascot. She's four to one on the morning line. This horse is, no matter which way you slice it, going to be a short price. Has some early speed. Didn't out of the gate as quickly as we're used to seeing from those Wesley Ward two-year-olds on debut, but then did end up absolutely romping at Keeneland. Uh, then came back and won up at Saratoga over foes that then went on to uh, run one, two in another stakes race at um, Belmont at the big A. What do we do with this horse? Um, she's, she's probably the most formidable American horse. Um, but she has a lot of speed and there's a lot of speed signed on here. Uh, you know, I, I obviously don't think everybody is, is going to be lined up there. There's some that are maybe a, a tad bit slower, like a horse, like, let's say Oxymore, uh, who's shown a lot of ones in their past performances, but I don't think that horse is going to get the lead or, or be close up. Um, Tyler's Tribe only knows one way. I, I mean, this, this horse really hasn't even been challenged <laughs> at all early. Uh, Speedboat Beach is another one who, who just goes. He's fast. He's super fast. Um, so I expect a really heated pace here, um, and it just all depends on, on the trip. and, and it could end up being kind of like a rider's race, uh, especially when, when you have to come in, in and out of traffic or, you know, trying to circle horses, things like that. You got to pick a spot and, and go for it. So we'll see. But um, I just don't think it's going to be like a, a, a wire to wire kind of thing where one horse just kind of bolts out, and, you know, almost like Golden Pal, where he gets out there and nobody can pass him. He's just too fast. I, I don't think that's going to happen in this race. I, I think there's some, some decent closers, especially the Euros um, besides uh, the outside one uh, in the Platinum Queen. I think they all have some late kick that should be really, really effective in a race like this. And with that said, is that kind of the profile that you're looking for, for a top pick or which horses you're interested in, in this spot? Um, I want to see somebody that can lay close enough to the pace without getting too far behind and, and finish strong. And and I, I think I found one in this race. Oh, you want to know Reveal who it is? Your secret. Oh, okay. All right. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It was, uh, it's magic mischief, the five or mischief okay. magic. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I looked at this horse's races. He's gotten better every single time. Um, and what really stood out to me was his race on August 13th at Newmarket in the Novice Stakes. He really, the, the race was going uh, counterclockwise like we run here. And it looked like an American race the way he won it. I mean, he ran away from him. But the, the turn of foot that this horse showed and even the next race the horse had it at Kempton on the, on the synthetic really showed a, a a nice burst of speed turn of foot that you'd like to see from a, a turf sprinter. Well, in watching his replays, he just looks like this big gangly kind of horse that still has some growing to do, especially when you look at him compared to the rest of the field he's facing. He just seems like a bigger horse than them. Um, I saw kind of what you saw with him. He's won and run well with different running styles, which you like to see that, um, versatility, especially from a young horse. He's been very class tested over in Europe. I mean, he's run behind Blackbeard and the Antarctic. So he's been facing some of the best horses that they have over here that aren't making the journey over here. My only concern with him, I kind of wonder, he's run mostly at six furlongs. I, I wonder if the five and a half might be a little too sharp for him. Um, I do feel like he's going to get a decent pace set up and that he won't give himself way too much to do. But I just kind of wondered if the extra furlong um, would be better for him considering what we've seen from him so far and his sort of turn of foot more um, closing style in a way than what we see from some of these other horses that want to be a little bit closer early. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a question when you're, when you're cutting back in distance, if, if, you know, especially on these short sprints, when you're cutting a half a furlong, it, it's a big difference. Um, but that's where, you know, the kind of the gamble is. I, I just think this horse's turn of foot and then combined with all the speed from the outside, 
uh, I think this horse should sit a good trip. All right. Well, Mischief Magic, is that going to be your top pick? That is my top pick for All right. sure. <laughs> nice little uh, little price on the morning line here. Was the eight to one? Yes, indeed. All Hopefully, right. we get that. I I, I it kind of thought the morning line was a little bit off. I, I mean, and and I say that because you have a horse like Private Creed, who's twelve to one on the line, and I don't believe that that horse is actually going to take that much money i think dramatized or dramatized is a little bit better and that horse is 15 to one on the line i i know that it only has three starts but that horse would probably take money same thing with persian force i don't i don't at 15 to one seems a little bit high um but we'll see once the uh the betting opens up and uh this should be a wide open great race to bet to start off the the whole breeders cup endeavor with this tough tough race yeah, I think I think people will kind of see it as such the wide open field we do and just go, oh, well, Wesley Ward. But I don't think it's that simple. And I'm glad that you agree that uh, that might not be the cop out way to go in a spot like this, especially with this particular filly. Um, I I kind of can make a case for the longest shot in the field here because it's, it's me and I have to um, <laughs> with American Apple. She's 20 to one on the morning line. And you can kind of toss those first few starts because that's just not what she wanted to do. She doesn't want to run on the dirt. The first time that she got on the turf, she was going a mile and she finished a respectable enough third, but then cutting back to the sprint distance at Kentucky Downs, that's when she won her first race. So turf sprinting, she's actually undefeated because she then came back to spring a huge upset in the matron at Belmont at the big A. So aqueduct um at 47 to 1 and that was over redefined and dance macabre those are the second and third place finishers behind love reigns in the bolton landing at saratoga so those two horses if you're using them as sort of the yardstick with which to measure the talent of love reigns then you have to kind of also have that same um metric looking at american apple who on buyers, she did improve significantly last time in the matron. And I like the way that she runs where she doesn't have to be on the lead, but she's always kind of right there for you. And I feel like I see when the rider asks that she goes. Um, and I also like kind of the ear flicking back and forth a little bit at the end of her races, kind of implying that it's not too much of a physical effort for her. So at 20 to 1, as the longest shot in this field, I don't think that she's the best horse in this race. And I think that these European invaders are certainly worth respecting and going to be very tough in a spot like this. But versus some of the U.S. horses that might be a shorter price, like Oxymore, um, like Tyler's Tribe, like Speedboat Beach, um, even like, you know, Love Reigns. I don't think the price discrepancy should be that significant between the two of them. So she's definitely going to be in some exotics for me. Yeah, I, I mean, this is this is almost kind of like a horse that you, you know, really want to to really run well because this steadily improved. I mean, every time out just got better, and then that last race, the Matron, fits with this group completely. It's it's just a matter of trip, at, you know, and if you you want to basically take a shot with that horse at a big price, you, you kind of have to, you know what I mean? Like you, any kind of vertical or horizontal situation, you have to use a horse like that because, you know, the the numbers fit, this horse is on the improve and the price is going to be right. I mean, those are like the three things that you look for in, in a horse that you want to bet. Um, I, I got no problem with that. You know, I mean, even cutting the, 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 to five and a half might even do this horse a, a little bit of good. Um, so yeah, I, I'm with you. That that's a definitely a live long shot in this race. It's the kind of race to look for those. Is there anyone else within this field that deserves a mention? Uh, maybe an honorable mention as one you would want to toss in somewhere, or anybody that we haven't talked about that you think we should? Uh, yes, sharp as a tech was one that I I thought ran really really well every time out um kind of regressed a little bit um but i i think this horse has a lot of talent and doesn't necessarily need the lead and i think that 
that was proven on that Kentucky Downs race on September 8th, um, where he, he wasn't really the pace setter. He kind of prompted the pace and, and, and kind of pushed the, the, the effort um, and just got beat late. I mean, it wasn't a, a, a bad race or anything, and, and Private Creed came flying and, and beat this horse late. So I can forgive that, especially going into this race. If that was a prep for this race, it, it's, it's probably one of the best preps you could ever get. I know that he was a horse that I feel like people really thought highly of going into that race, and that's why he was such a short-priced favorite. Not all horses appreciate the configuration of Kentucky Downs. Maybe six and a half was a little bit too far from him. You know that he's going to be involved and right there early. I got no problem with this horse either. Yeah, I, I mean, it it just screams like that juvie sprint at at Kentucky Downs was a prep for this race. And, and it might very well be. Um, 15 to 1 on the line, you know, you, you know how I like to, to – avoid chalk at all costs. So, you know, <laughs> this was right in my alley. Same thing with American Apple. So, you know, for me, it's going to be a lot of decision making when it comes down to actually making a bet here. Um, who I like behind Mischief Magic. And those are two that are really on my radar. I, I want to blow up the tote board first race, no doubt. I want to start the Breeders' Cup off strong Another because... Bang. There's some chalk later that's going to be tough to beat throughout these 14 races. So I think this is this is the race where you want to find those prices and make sure that you're playing them as effectively as you can. Is there anyone that's a toss? You know what? I, I don't want to say this, but I think I'm going to. I think platinum, the Platinum Queen is a toss. I, I just don't like her post. I don't like the running style. Just there are too many things she's up against. Um, in this race. And if she wins, she'll be proven the best for sure. Um, you know, and, and it's not impossible, uh, but I'm just not going to use her. I think going against any favorite in here, if you can make a case for five, six, seven horses, kind of like we have, that's the play. So I respect. <laughs> All right, Barry. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk about this Breeders Cup juvenile turf sprint. We've got a race covered by a different guest handicapper for each race of Breeders' Cup and a pleasure to get things started on Breeders' Cup Friday with you. All right. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's been a pleasure. You're always good. Uh, you know, I love your stuff and uh, keep doing your thing. Feeling is mutual. Good luck, everybody, and thanks for tuning in.